Hey guys, it's Rebecca Burstadt. I am actually coming to you fresh out of the shower uh, with a bare face and I want you to see what my skin looks like right now. It is healing, but my skin is all kinds of pissed off. Now, about a month and a half ago, I had done a video series of Battle of the Cleansers or Battle of the Anti-Aging Cleansers. And I had used the Peter Thomas Roth Anti-Aging Cleansing Gel on this side and the Mario, Mario Badescu Glycolic glycolic foaming cleanser on this side. Well, I noticed that from day to day or week to week for the three weeks that I did checkups that this side of my face was completely broke out. I had all kinds of dry patches. I have like patches on my eye that still haven't gone away from using this cleanser. And so I just went after like so many weeks um, of using one on the other, uh, one of the other on each side. Um, after a month, I stopped doing that and I just started using the Peter Thomas Roth all over. And then I was like, I wonder, you know, cause this is tearing my skin up. Um, I, I talked about in another video that I was gonna do an ingredient breakdown. I did. It took me several days to do research on both of these, to look up all the ingredients, to cross reference the ingredients, to do more research on the individual ingredients and how they interact with each other, that kind of thing. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I wanna use this up, but I don't, I don't wanna waste it. So I started using it in combination with this. I'd put a little of this in my hand and put a little of this on top and mix them together and spread it out on my face. And as you can see, um, and I'll try, um, I know in some of my other videos, you've seen my skin like bare or like get ready with me's and stuff like that, where my whole, like this whole side of my face was completely broke out. Um, it's like the cleansers fight with each other and th they don't play well, they're not good friends. And after doing some research, I realized why the Mario Badescu was breaking me out so bad. There's an ingredient in here I'm allergic to. Yes, it's down towards the bottom. Yes, there's probably a small quantity of it. But the fact that it's in this product is most likely the reason why not only do I have some sort of like weird contact dermatitis on my eye, up by my eyebrow, uh, why I've got some scaly patches on my face, why my skin was super dehydrated. And I'm not just talking my skin is dry. My skin's naturally dry. I'm talking so dry. I wake up in the morning and my face is tight. I splash my face with water and water burns it, that kind of thing. So um, let's get into the breakdown of the ingredients. Now, um, I did talk about doing an ingredient breakdown in another video. So here we go. This is going to be a long one. Um, the, there's four ingredients that I found that were in both products. Water, common sense, uh, cocomito propyl or propyl bentane, glycolic acid, common, they're both anti-aging cleansers, and propylene glycol. Now, for those that don't know, there are two main ingredients that companies use as a soluble factor or to help things mix better or as a preservative. You've got propylene glycol and then you've got polysorbate. And polysorbate comes in a wide range of whether it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And I think I've got a cat hair in my eye. Um, so those are like common ingredients. Some people don't like the fact that they're in uh, products, but it is what it is. They're very common ingredients in cosmetics and um, skincare. So if you like go to make glycerin soap at home, you're most likely going to be using uh, vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, and polysorbate, um, usually polysorbate 20. Standard base ingredients for something like that. Or if you're not making a uh, glycerin base, you're gonna use Castile soap. So on the Peter Thomas Roth, I'll talk about this one first. We have sodium laureth sulfate. It is an ingredient that is drive, derived from um, eth etho oxalated laurel alcohol, uh, alcohol and it is used as a sulfate or a surfactant so basically um, a sudsing ingredient. Cocomidopropyl bentane is also a surfactant. It has been associated with irritation and allergic co contact dermatitis reactions that could be due to an ingredient due to the ingredient itself or impurities present in it. Seeing as though this one's a fraction of the cost, I can expect this one to have like a lower quality product in, or ingredient in it versus this one. But again, they could get their ingredients from the same place and I, you know, we, we wouldn't know. Then we have laurel glucoside, which is an ingredient, it's a sugar. Glucoside, anything with gluc in it is going to be a sugar. So um, it is a lipid-based surfactant. And again, with the name surfactant, you're looking at uh, something that suds. Then we have propylene glycol. It is a small organic alcohol commonly used as a skin conditioning agent. It has been associated with, ir um, with irritant, as an irritant and allergic and allergic contact dermatitis, as well as contact uh, ut uticaria in humans. These sensitizing effects can manifest in propylene glycol concentrations as low as 2%. So if you're using propylene glycol on products, you can um, 
have sensitivities to them is more or less what it's saying. Then there's salicylic acid. Now, this is a common ingredient that is used in acneic medications for, um, you either have benzoyl peroxide or you have salicylic acid. Both of them work pretty well. Um, I know if I want to remove head lice from a child, I put benzoyl peroxide on them. If I want to get rid of acne on my skin, I use salicylic acid. Those are the two determining factors that I use personally, and benzoyl peroxide works 10 times better at removing lice than any Ridex. Just a heads up. Um, so salicylic acid is a naturally occurring and synthetically produced beta hydroxy acid used in skin treatment products. So you have your BHAs and your AHAs, and some of these acids, when they are combined in one product, work great together. Sometimes if you're using a product like this with a BHA and an AHA in it, and then say you use another uh, product like an eye cream that also has, say, another AHA in it, you might have some issues. So keep that in mind. Then we have glycolic acid. It is an alpha hydroxy acid used in chemical peels and anti-aging skin uh, products, and it can cause irritation. Sometimes, um, I don't know if you can tell the difference between the color of my neck and my face, but glycolic acid seems to uh, make my face darker. I have been using, this came in the kit with the Mario Badescu product. This is a glycolic acid toner. I have used quite a bit of it. And I noticed using these in conjunction with each other, um, whether separately, um, just these two products along with my rest of my skincare or using all three of these together, I have noticed that these two products here that both contain glycolic acid uh, cause my face to darken. So my face isn't the same shade that it was six months ago when I started using these products. And then we have Kyrkus alba bark. It's the bark of an oak tree called Kyrkus alba. Some people apply oak bark directly to the skin in a comp compress or add it to a bath water for pain and swelling for inflammation of the skin. It provides antimicrobial, antiseptic, astringent, bactericidal, um, bacterial static, and tonic. It, um, it's really good for porous skin, oily skin, problematic skin, and acneic skin. So again, that's actually a pretty good ingredient for this. Then we have citrus grandis fruit extract, ick extract, blah, blah, which is grapefruit. It's an astringent conditioning agent, exfoliant, um, exfoliate peeling agent, antimicrobials, anti-wrinkle agent, moisturizing agent, nourishing, nourishing agent, and anti-acneic agent. So that's again, the, this product does say that it helps with breakouts, and it does. Hands down, I can use this on my face once a day, and it, any breakouts that I have heal up super fast. Um, if I get a breakout that's coming on, I dab it on, I kind of massage it in, I let it sit overnight, and it clears it up by the morning. It's great. Then we have Prunus persica extract or fruit extract. It's peach fruit extract. It's used for moisturizing and skin conditioning. Citrus arantifolia fruit extract, which is lime. It's an astringent. It's skin conditioning. It offers astringent, antiseptic, anti-acne, uh, antioxidant cleansing and exfoliating properties. Then we have citrus limon fruit extract again, lemon. Uh, it's a hydrosoluble fraction of citrus lemon berman pericarpum oil <laughs> obtained by molecular distil distillation, particularly suitable for the preparation of hydrolates, aromatic waters, and tonics, completely natural without solvents or uh, stabilizers. Or solubilizers. Sorry. Trying to say stabilizers and never mind. Then we have arginine. I actually have a pill up here in my medicine chest. Actually, I think I moved it. Um, it has L-arginine, L-ornithine, and L- um, arginine, ornithine, and there's another one. Anyways, um, those are like vitamins that I take to help with like digestion and pain and uh, swelling, that kind of stuff. So it says arginine is a naturally occurring amino acid. It is used as a um, conditioning agent and it also has anti-static uh, effects. It's, let's see, it's an aesthetic enhancer neutralizing agent. It provides improving dyeing format. So like if you're trying to color something, it holds the colorant better. Uh, let's see, it says the color retention for a temporary dye and mitigation of uh, irradiation potential. It is an amino acid derived product. Pre uh, it prevents color fading for oxidative dyes. It acts as an anchor for the up uptake of PCA and various other amino acids. Then we have Tila cordata fruit extract, which is the extract of a flower from Linden called Tila cordata. Um, it is used as a skin conditioning agent and it's refreshing and soothing to the skin. Then we have allotonin, which is a naturally incurring nitrogenous uh, compound that is used as a skin conditioning agent. It acts as an active ingredient with keratolic, um, with keratolic. It is moisturizing, soothing. Um, this, it's a skin protectant 
effect uh, that also helps with anti-irritating properties. So like say you've got products in here like the BHAs and AHAs that might piss off your skin, this is gonna help calm them down. It dissolves uh, the intercellular cement that holds the cornified cells together, helping to natural, helping the natural disquamation of stardom corneum and increases skin smoothness. The moisturizing effect results from its ability to increase the water bound, uh, bound to the intercellular matrix and keratin, thereby softening the skin, making the skin look healthier. It says allotonin forms, a com um, forms, complexes, and neutralizes many irritant and sensitizing agents. So the ingredients that I read further up that are that have the possibility to irritate your skin or to sensitize it, this is going to like neutralize it. It is uh, safe. It is non non irritating. It is highly compatible with the skin as well as cosmetic raw ingredients like uh, anionic, cationic, and non ionic systems. Then we have BHT, which is butylated hydroxyline. It is a uh, toline-based ingredient that is used as a preservative in food and personal care products. Antioxidant, it's, uh, it's also used as a fragrant ingredient. It possesses good carry-through properties, provides good synergism when used in combination with a BHA. So your glycolic acid and this, the BHT, are going to like work hand-in-hand -hand together. Then we have Panthenol. Panthenol is in a lot of products from lotions to the tear-free baby shampoo, body washes, uh, soaps, you name it, Panthenol is in a lot of products. It is a form of B5. So you've got your thiamine, your riboflavin, those kinds of things that are also B vitamins. This is also in the B vitamin family. It is used as a moisturizer and a lubricating compound. This ingredient is listed in the PETA's Caring Consumer Guide as a substance that can be of either animal or plant origin. Now, neither of these claim to be vegan or cruelty-free or any of that kind of stuff that I know of. I mean, it's not listed. I don't think it's listed on the bottles for either of them. I'd have to peel a little tab. Um, if they are either vegan or cruelty-free, I'll leave it in the description box. Um, it is derived, it is a derivative of B5, vitamin B5. It provides deep penetrating moisturization to stimulate epithelization and offers wound healing and anti-inflammatory effects. Again, anti-breakout, antimicrobial, that kind of stuff. It's going to get on the blemishes on your skin. It's going to help soothe them, help reduce the redness, the swelling, the irritation, that kind of stuff. Panthenol is a pretty good ingredient. Then you have butylene glycol, which I think, no, I thought that was one of the ingredients that was listed in both. It is a small organic alcohol used as a solvent and a conditioning agent. Um, the viscosity of it decre is a, it is a viscosity decreasing agent. So basically it makes it um, less viscous where it's not as thick. Now this is a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty thick product, but compared to this one, where this one moves a little bit easier, that one doesn't move as well. So this is used to help thin it out just a little bit. Uh, it's also used as a humectant. It is highly effect it is a highly effective solvent with good distribution. It inhibits drying out of cosmetics and prevents crystallization of insoluble compounds. It aids in solubilizing uh, aqueous insoluble ingredients and stabilizing volatile compounds such as fragrances. Butylene glycol contributes to preservation of cosmetic a uh, of cosmetics against spoiling, so it's also used as a preservative. Then we have potassium sorbate. Um, it's a type of salt. Um, I don't know for those of you that know this, but there are two different types of like salts that are recommended for people. You have sodium chloride, which is your regular idolized um, table salt, or you have this product, which is the potassium sorbate, which is actually a potassium based salt. Uh, people that can't have salt products due to blood pressure or uh, diabetes, that kind of thing, they use a salt substitute. I, I know um, Morton makes one, it's in a blue, a small blue container. It, it really doesn't taste like salt, but for those of us, us that can handle salt, um, it, it doesn't taste right, it doesn't taste normal, but it does add some sort of salty flavor to the product. It's just made from potassium, which you also have to, um, potassium's vitamin K. In order to use potassium salts, you have to keep a very close eye on your potassium. For those of you that get like Charlie horses and stuff like that, um, or where your muscles seize up and you either have to like massage them out, beat them out, stretch them out, that kind of thing, um, that means you're usually low on potassium, but too much potassium can cause a heart attack. So you gotta be careful about that. It says potassium sorbate is a potassium salt of sorbic acid and is naturally occurring microbial compound and is used as a preservative. You can also use it as salt. Then we have sodium benzenate. It is a preservative commonly used in foods, pharmaceuticals, and cosmetics. 
It is um, active against yeast, mold, and bacteria in cosmetic products that have a pH value of 4.5 or less. So this is an acid, not an alkaline. As the pH decreases, the um, leucidal liquid or, oh wait, excuse me, it, the um, effectiveness increases. It is combined with other antimicrobials, yeah, can't even speak, antimicrobials like potassium sorbate, leucidal liquids, or um, Cosmosyl CQ. It reduces the overall pH of the finished product and provides a broad, a broad spectrum activity. Three more ingredients to go on this bad boy. Then we have phenyl oxyethanol. It is a preservative used in com uh, cosmetics and personal care products. It is used in creams, lotions, color cosmetics, shampoos, bath gels, and other rinse off type uh, products and surfactants. Um, it is a raw material for cosmetics. It acts as a preservative, offers characteristics such as combat compatibility with most cosmetic ingredients, toughness, and long lasting. Then we have amyl cinnamol. It is a synthetically produced scent ingredient that has been associated with allergies and contact dermatitis. It acts as a fragrance ingredient and a fixative. It blends easily with products like jasmine like floralness and accompanies uh, when accompanied by more volatile chemicals of floral character. The lower alpha-lyptic alcohols from acetals with jasmine-like odors, while higher alpha-lyptic alcohols have a cocoa-like aroma, contains the antioxidant BHT. BHT is also in this product. Then we have linalool, which is a terpene. It acts as a fragrance ingredient, has a fresh, fresh natural floral note. Remember the ingredient I just talked about that helps with um, <laughs> smoothing those things out? That's why it's in there, because of this product. It has a natural floral note and is completely soluble in alcohol. Terpene is any of the large groups of volatile, unsaturated hydrocarbons found in the essential oils of plants, especially especially conifers and citrus, citrus trees. Okay, that is all the ingredients for the Peter Thomas Roth Anti-Aging Cleansing Gel. That's that one. And the majority of these ingredients, minus about four of them, which I understand why those four are in there because they have to work with the other ingredients to even them out or to help make them more soluble. I wouldn't recommend drinking this, <laughs> but um, you can understand that this product is a lot better for your skin than the one I'm about to talk about. And hopefully me breaking down these ingredients, uh, I will try and make a blog with all my research on these products and I will post it, uh, I'll post the link to it in the description box because I really think people need to do more research on what you're putting on your face because the next ingredient or the next product is why. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm allergic to latex and aspirin and formaldehyde and quite a few other things. And I never expected to have ingredients like that in a facial cleanser. So we're going to get into that. So again, I've left off like water. The only thing I'm not talking about in these ingredients is water. And I will leave the ingredients linked down below as well as links to the individual products so you can look them up. Okay, this one also has a sulfate in it, but this one has sodium laurel sulfate. It is a sodium salt of the laurel sulfate. Um, if I was to buy a product would I want something that's an SLS or an SLES? Well, to be honest, I really don't want either, but you kind of have to have them for sensing agents. Um, you have sodium lorth sulfate, which is what that one has, and then you have sodium laurel sulfate, which is what this one has. One of them is more irritating to the skin than the other. Keep that in mind. Then we have the cocoa medo propyl or propyl bel uh, bet betaine that I talked about in the other one. I'm gonna skip over that. I'm gonna skip over that ingredient, the, the glycolic acid and the propylene glycol, because they're um, those are the first four ingredients in this product is the sodium lauryl sulfate, the bentane, the glycolic acid, and the propylene glycol. Those are the first four ingredients. So basically you have um, the sulfate, a surfactant, the AHA, and an alcohol. Those are the first four ingredients. Then you have cocoa midi, um, Coco Midi MEA, which is a compound synthesized from coconut oils. So for those of you that have an allergy to coconut oil, stay away from this one. This one, uh, it says coconut oil and ethyl limine. Um, it is a surfactant, a foam booster, because this says glycolic foaming cleanser. It doesn't really foam on my skin. It might make a little bit of white suds when I use it, but it doesn't like bubble and stuff. Um, it's a foam booster, viscosity increasing agent, equaceous, emulsifying, emulsion stabilizing, foam boosting, viscosity controlling. It acts as a foam booster and a stabilizer. It is derived from fatty acids of coconut oil. 
Okay, uh, it's also used to thicken aqueous portions of cosmetics and personal care products. Then we have Salva Officinalis Leaf Extract, which I kind of wish was in the other one. It acts as a fragrance enhancer. It is used in fragrances and other cosmetic care products. Sage is a cure-all herb with astringent and antiseptic stimulating properties. It contains camphor and is recommended as a natural antiperspirant. I like camphor, I like sage, I like using both of them in foods and in like perfumes and things like that um, because I, I like the aromatic effect of them. Then we have Hypercurum perforatum extract, which is St. John's wort. For those that don't know, when people uh, back in the day thought that they had schizophrenia or paranoia or depression or something like that, they would take St. John's wort to help stabilize moods. Hypercurum perforatum extract offers uh, antiseptic, astringent, healing, and soothing properties. So that's, you know, you figure people take it internally, it should be okay for your skin. Then we have chamomilla reticita flower extract, which is a matricaria flower. It is a skin conditioning agent it says it acts as an emollient oxid uh, ox ant i just can't even speak today <laughs> it's an antioxidant anti-inflammatory healing and non and a toning agent it contains azuline which helps reduce puffiness and cleanses pores uh, of impurities it calms dry or irritated skin acne eczema rashes wounds and dermatitis it relieves tension headaches and stress moreover it relaxes smooth uh, it relaxes smooth mu muscles muscles and offers soft and soothe skin and then we have Althea officinalis leaf, um, which is the root of a marshmallow, mar marshmallow root extract. Not marshmallow, marshmallow, which you can use for teas and cooking. It's the, the main ingredient that you use for marshmallow. There you go. It comes from the Althea officinalis plant, which is naturally a hydroglycolic, which means water and, you know, AHA, or a water version of AHA. It's, it's, it's made by isolating special compounds found in the leaves and roots. It acts as an anti-inflammatory agent. It is used for treating burns, bites, and skin infl uh, inflammatory diseases, and it suppresses propagation of microbial. Marshmallow root extract is an anti-irritant and is tolerable by those with allergies and hypersensitive skin. It is also known as to provide relief from itching, swelling, redness, and chafing due to its emollient and soothing properties. The root and stem of the marshmallow plant secrete mucilage, mucilage, yuck, which helps soothe skin, lowers swelling, and kills bacteria. It is considered particularly beneficial in aftershave and skincare products that treat sunburns and dry skin. Yay! Then we have Aquila myliforum extract, which is common yarrow. It acts as an antioxidant, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and wound healing agent. Then we have sodium chloride. I've talked about that before. Sodium chloride is table salt. <laughs> it is an inorganic salt, also called table salt. It is, acts as a masking and viscosity controlling agent. You use salt to help thicken things. Uh, then we have, oh, it's also used as a preservative on like meats. Methyl paraben is in the paraben family of preservatives used by the food, pharmaceutical, and personal care product industries. Parabens mimic estrogen and can act as potential hormone endocrine system disruptors. It acts as a preservative, displays uh, a low irritation potential, having low toxicity levels, and are active against a wide spectrum of fungi and bacterial at low concentration. That's why people don't like parabens, because you figure we do a lot with parabens and people are worried about, you know, especially men using a product that has an estrogen type ingredient in it. Will it affect them? Will it cause them to grow hair places they don't want it or other tissue development? It's a whole thing. There's a whole movement on paraben-free products. I get it. Then we have propyl paraben. It is in the paraben family of preservatives used by the food, pharmaceutical, and personal care product industries. Then the last ingredient is di diazolidinyl urea. I'm just gonna call it what it is. It's formaldehyde. <laughs> It is used as an antimicrobial per a preservative that works by forming formaldehyde in cosmetic products. Yuck. It's also a very cheap filler. You can get a five gallon bucket of the stuff for 20 bucks. It's super cheap, used as a filler. It's also used as a preservative. The stuff is nasty. People exposed to such formaldehyde releasing ingredients may develop a formaldehyde allergy. That would be me. I worked with hair care products for a decade and uh, yeah. Got allergic to it from working with shampoos, conditioners, styling products. Great stuff. It is an aller or an allergy to the ingredient itself. In the U.S., approximately 20% of cosmetics and personal care products contain a formaldehyde releaser. 
which means once it's on your skin, it mutates and changes and forms a stronger version of formaldehyde. DM, DM, hi, Danton. It says, um, it is frequently, and its frequency of contact allergy to these ingredients is much higher among Americans compared to studies in Europe. Go figure, they got rid of it. It says, it acts as a preservative and an antiseptic as it is a white, fine, free-flowing crystalline powder with no or slight characteristic odors. It kind of smells like mint. It is a broad spectrum antibiotic and can effectively constrain growth of gram positive gram negative bacteria, yeast, and mold. Okay, let me just show you. The ingredients for this product start here, continue to this page, and are the very first three here. The ingredients for this one start here and finish on this page. This product has twice the amount of ingredients that the other one does, and it doesn't have formaldehyde in it. Now I know why I'm having so many problems with my skin breaking out dry patches, patches that are scaly and flaky, and no matter what I do to them, with moisturizing, with exfoliation, with physical exfoliators, like an actual pumice stone, I can't get the darn thing to go away. So I ended up getting contact dermatitis from this product here. And you know, I, when I wash my face, I even go over my eyebrows. So that means this area of my eye is exposed to formaldehyde, which is why I think I have this lovely dry patch right here on my eye that won't go away. It messes with my eyeshadow, makes stuff look patchy and unblended, and it just pisses me off. So <laughs> this is the battle of the cleansers, the final review. My face is so dry, it actually hurts. All I have on is the Hanalei lip treatment. Um, I got out of the shower. I wanted to do this video. I haven't done anything else to my skin. It is exactly freshly washed out of the shower. Will I continue to use this? Probably on my body, but never again on my face. I'm not gonna waste $12 worth of product um, on my face. It's gonna cause me to have this spot here that was so, so painful when it came up. The one here that finally healed, or the one here. Um, all, like the one on the side of my nose. Um, I've got one here. I mean, my whole, my whole forehead is broke out. Both sides of my face are broke out. I, had an, I have an entire patch down here that is slowly healing. I've got one here. My face is an absolute disaster. Um, I will not be using this on my face again. I will use it from my chest down. I do get uh, sebaceous filaments or like those ingrown hairs on my arms where um, oil from my skin gets trapped under the skin and then the hair grows and the skin kind of grows over it, which traps the hair under the skin. I will most likely use that on my arm area to get rid of those. Uh, this product I will continue to use when I can afford the 40, I think it's $48 or $42 or hell, it might even be $38 um, to buy the full size of this when I actually run low. I will be saving my pennies to buy that because I love this product. I like the fact that um, I stopped using this a week ago. I started using this to help break, help clear up my breakouts and everything that was under the surface has come forward and now you can see that it's healing. I like what this does to my skin. I like how it works. It is what it is. Um, will I continue to use the rest of the products from Mario Badescu? Yes, I will. I'm not gonna waste any of the products. I have the acid toner, I have the eye cream, I have the collagen mask. None of these products really bother me um, skincare wise. I will be looking further into the ingredients of these, scary as it may be. Um, and time consuming, but after finding what ingredients are in the cleanser, I'm now worried about what else is in the products. I mean, I know that basically from here up, the skin color on my face has changed. It used to match my hand pretty well or my arm. I don't get the sun. So um, the fact that my face is a lot darker than my neck or anywhere else on my body bothers me. And those of you that tan or that used to go to a tanning bed or whatever, you know when you tan, your face usually doesn't tan, it's the rest of your body that tans. So I do know that this product was changing the color of my skin. I know in the first two weeks of me doing this side with this one, you could literally see a notable difference on this side of my face with how dark it was uh, compared to this side. So I was kind of blown away by that. I know this was a long video, it's long, it's rambly, I'm hot, I'm a little irritated myself besides just the fact that I have dry skin and it's irritated. I'm a little irritated. So I'm gonna go ahead and go. Hopefully you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. This is uploaded as it is. All of my slurs, my slip ups, my mispronunciations, all of that is gonna go up just like it is. I'm not recording this again. I don't care if it's an hour long or 45 minutes long. I wanted to get these ingredients out there. 
because this this angers me. It really does. The stuff the stuff that cosmetic companies can get away with putting in products that cause irritation, that cause um, swelling, that cause uh, allergic reactions, that kind of stuff, and people don't know about it. So I might even just do an entire breakdown video on companies that use things like formaldehyde on a regular basis in their products, and they hide it under another name, DM, DM, Hydantin, and uh, they think they can get away with it. So I might just do a video on that. I, I worked as a cosmetologist for years. I did go through cosmetology school. We learned.